Now, you might be wondering why I have an all-in-one here on the desk, and I actually received this the other day, and I've been using it nonstop ever since. It's pretty amazing. This is the HP Omni Studio X. It's their new consumer all-in-one that I think blows away anything that the iMac M4, which was just announced this week, uh, can bring to the table. I think this has a better display, a bigger display. This is 31.5 inches. This has a 4K resolution. It also has uh, display port out and display port in. What does that mean? Well, you can actually use this as a monitor, a secondary monitor, or you can add to it, but you can use this as an external display for another device. You could also have KVM here, so you can use one display and one keyboard and mouse for multiple devices. And that's pretty amazing. That's a game changer you can't do on a Mac or iMac, I should say. And I don't think there's any other way natively to do it on the iMac. So this is pretty good right out of the box. You're able to use this with other devices, but as an all-in-one, this really does a great job. It's got the Core Ultra 7 155H, 16 cores, 22 threads. That's a series one, not the Meteor Lake or any, if that is the Meteor Lake, not the Lunar Lake that we just looked at, but that really doesn't matter. You're gonna get very good performance out of this. You're gonna be able to do graphics work. Why? Because this has a discrete GPU. This has the NVIDIA RTX 4050. Now, of course, it's not gonna blow you away with 4090 type performance. No, but it does give you a nice graphics boost. You can do 4K video editing on this. You can play all your games. You can play AAA titles on this. Uh, again, you have to play with the settings, but really does bring a nice boost to the table. I like the media silver in terms of this color, and I really love the fact that you're getting thin bezels on the three sides, a minimal bezel on the chin, something we can't say about that iMac, which I think doesn't look great. It, you know, the design-wise, it looks kind of not great. And I don't like those pastel colors, but that's just me. But this really fits on your desk, gives it a nice, sleek, modern look, and it's pretty amazing. It's got some amazing speakers on it. Great display. The b display, by the way, gets super bright. We'll get into the measurements that I got on this, and I was really, wow. This is a, one of the brightest displays. And again, like I said, I love the fact that you can use this as an external monitor for other devices. So let's get into why I think the HP Omni Studio X is a game changer as far as an all-in-one here for 2024, and why I think this is the better choice over the iMac M4, which was just released. Let's get into it now. Hey, everybody. It's Andrew, and this is the HP Omni Studio X, all new for 2024. Coming up. The HP Omni Studio X comes in a 27 inch version and what we have here today, a 31.5 inch version. And right now that 27 inch is on sale for $1,250 over at Best Buy. This one that we have here today as configured comes in just shy of $2,000, $1979.99. For those that are interested, I'll leave links for everything in the description below. 32 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte of storage here. And in that Meteor Silver, looks gorgeous. It's got that 4K display. Again, I'll leave my affiliate link in the description below. I'll also leave a link to hp.com. They have more customization as well. That being said, I think it's a very good price considering you're getting a very premium high-end all-in-one that I think blows away the iMac M4 in a lot of ways. Let's get into it. Now, I'm really impressed with the packaging here. They've reduced the size of the box. Normally, these all-in-ones come in a pretty massive box. It's hard to manage, hard to throw it around. Not the case with the HP Omni Studio X, a 31.5-inch all-in-one. And here's what you get in the box. You get the base, you get the stand, keyboard, mouse, some documentation, USB-C cable, your power cord, and your cable management there that will help keep it uh, with your, your cables out of the way and stuff like that. So that little tool is there. And then, of course, the packaging is pretty nice, as I mentioned. So nice that they did that. Here's a layout of everything you get in the box. Now, this has that meteor silver gray or meteor gray, whatever the hell they're calling it. It's actually looking pretty good. And I love the fact that you get the really small bezels on the three sides and a very minimal bezel on the bottom. Not something we can say for that new iMac that was just announced with the M4. So just keep that in mind. But I think the overall aesthetics here are really, really good. This is one sleek looking, modern looking all in one on your desktop. This is going to be something you want to look at and use. Unlike the iMac, you don't get those stupid colors. I don't like those pastels. Some people may like them. I like this more grayish color. I know it just seems a little bit more sleek and modern to me, but of course that's purely subjective. 
All right, let's talk about the star of the show, and that would be its display. 31.5 inches IPS display, and I'm going to tell you right off the bat, very bright. I measured 682 nits in terms of brightness. Excellent contrast, very good black levels, good white point. Overall, an excellent display. It's got really great coverage of the color gamut. It's color accurate. So if you're going to do content creation in Lightroom, Photoshop, video editing, color grading, and DaVinci Resolve, say Premiere Pro, this is going to be a panel for that. So very good on your desk. If you're doing video editing, Photoshop, stuff like that, this is going to be great. Now, with standard dynamic range, as I mentioned, 682 nits can peak even brighter when looking at HDR content because this does support HDR. So watching high dynamic range in Netflix, YouTube, Amazon, and the like has been spectacular on this panel. Love it. And it also has an anti-glare coating in terms of that display, so it wasn't too bad in terms of the glare and reflection, although I've got natural light hitting it, as you see here. It is still very good, and having that really great brightness certainly overcomes any kind of sunlight and any kind of bright environment, so pretty good in that regard. Now, one thing I would have liked to have seen is a higher refresh rate. This has that pretty standard 60 hertz in terms of the refresh rate, but 120 would have been great on this. I'm not sure if they could have sourced a panel at this size with that 4K resolution. But that being said, I, I do have it on my wish list. Hopefully next iteration, they'll be able to bump up that refresh rate. And just looking at this display, it looks a lot better than the new iMac M4 that was just announced, especially the three micro bezels around the sides. And then, of course, on the bottom, a very minimal bezel, something you don't get with that iMac uh, M4, which I think is an eyesore. I'm not crazy about the design, I'll be honest with you. And I don't love those pastel colors. Just, just me, but that's pretty subjective. But here, I think there's no doubt about it. This is one good-looking all-in-one. There's no doubt about it. You also get that pop-up IR webcam. It's five megapixels, and I will say it's very good as far as doing video conferencing. And I love the fact that you can put it away. It pops back down into itself, so you don't have to have any worry about security or privacy when you don't need it. So really good, and I like the fact that you do get that face recognition, something you can't do on the iMac. They don't have any sort of IR or face recognition with their cameras. And I also love the fact that you get a 31.5 inch display. That gives you a lot of screen real estate and the iMac is limited to 24 inches. They did away with the 27 inch, unfortunately. That would have been great to get that. But having 31.5 inches here is a lot better, in my opinion, for being more productive and for consuming media. So having more screen real estate, especially on an all-in-one on your desktop, to me is a big win. So this is the Poly Studio camera here at 5 megapixel. This is at QHD resolution or 2K resolution. What do you think about the video quality? What do you think about the audio quality? Now, this camera does pop up out of the unit itself. So if you need it for more security and privacy, you can put it away. That's pretty good. The Poly Camera Studio Pro or Poly Camera Pro, I should say, software has been updated. It's pretty excellent, I should say. So a lot of customization, a lot of uh, configuration at your fingertips. What do you think about the video quality? Again, what do you think about the audio quality? This is an IR camera, so you can log in with face recognition with Windows Hello. Overall, I think it's pretty good. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Now, plenty of I.O. on this device, at least for an all-in-one of this magnitude. So what we have here on the back are two USB Type-A ports, 10 gigabits per second as far as the transfers there. One headphone jack. It's a combo jack, of course. An RJ45 Ethernet port, a Type-C, 20 gigabits per second on that one. Display port 1.4 supported on that. On the stand, you get a USB Type-C 10 gigabits per second to USB Type-A 10 gigabits per second as well. That's nice to have that. Pretty convenient there as well. On the top is a pop-up 5 megapixel IR webcam, and on the back is your power button and your joystick-like menu control. That, of course, is great for controlling this as a monitor as well. So a lot of control at your fingertips here. Now, as far as replacing the memory and the SSD and replacing other parts, it's possible, and HP even has a service video here, although I was told by HP that this particular machine is labeled as no user serviceable parts. So opening it up may affect the warranty. So you've been warned, whether something goes wrong, don't blame me. However, as they show in this video, you can replace the parts, especially the RAM and the SSD, certainly welcome. This is not something you can do with an iMac or other all-in-ones, at least in the ones that 
that are offered by Apple, which is, of course, the iMac. But here you do get some replaceable parts, and that is always welcome. It just may void your warranty, so just be aware of that. And I know a lot of all-in-ones, when they give you the keyboard and mouse, it's a little bit cheap feeling, a little bit of a throw-in. That's not the case here. I think the keyboard and the mouse are actually premium feeling. And the keyboard itself was pretty good to type on in terms of the tactility, the key travel, the overall feedback. Overall, pretty good. It also has a numeric keypad that's properly laid out. So the overall takeaway is this mouse and keyboard were very good. The mouse itself was very good for scrolling around, and its responsiveness was spot on. So very nice in the box, good value add right there. All right, let's talk performance, and this is running the Intel Core Ultra 7 155H Meteor Lake. Yes, we've seen it many times on the channel in many laptops, of course, but this, of course, is an all-in-one, and what we're seeing here is decent single-core and decent and really good multi-core, I should say, for doing everyday tasks. Everything worked very well. Now, of course, the Apple iMac M3, released in 2023, had better single-core, 3042, but it didn't do quite as well in terms of the multi-core, so just keep that in mind but we'll have to see what the iMac M4 has in store we're expecting better single and multi-core performance but of course until we get a unit to test we'll have to just use that as conjecture that being said looking at Cinebench 2024 we have good single core good multi-core again that's the theme here so doing Microsoft Office email web browsing everything worked very well now as far as the graphics are concerned this has the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4050 now this has 60 watts of power fed to it so don't expect to play AAA titles on the highest, highest settings, but you definitely can play all those titles. Just play around with the settings. You could do 4K video editing. It did well in the Pugin Bench DaVinci Resolve Benchmark. So video editing, color grading, stuff like that all will work well, especially with this really nice 4K display. And of course, that discrete GPU certainly helps out in that graphics performance. And when it comes to fan noise and stuff like that, never too loud. Even when you're gaming, it does come on, but not overly loud. So I didn't find it too distracting. And when you're doing everyday tasks, there was no noticeable whirl that really, really threw you off. So very good in terms of the fan noise here. And I think this all-in-one does a great job in the overall package, the overall grand scheme of things. Now we're looking at dual two watt speakers, their DTS X audio poly studio ultra sound. And I think the overall sound fills up a room really great, full, rich, nice volume here, nice bass, good mids, everything you'd want in this all in one in terms of an audio experience is pretty immersive. So let's give it a listen and you let me know what you think in the comments section below. <laughs> Now, I wanted to point something out with regards to pricing. Now, this 31.5-inch version comes in at $1,979.99 over at Best Buy. That gets you the Core Ultra 7, the 155H, the 32 gigabytes of RAM, the 1 terabyte of storage, which, of course, are both upgradable as far as RAM and storage, with that NVIDIA RTX 4050. That is just shy of $2,000. Now, let's pre-order and configure an iMac M4, which was announced this week, with 32 gigabytes of unified memory. Memory, a one terabyte of storage, all non upgradable, by the way. And that comes in at $2,299, which is more money in which you're getting a smaller display, not quite as much functionality. You cannot use it as an external display right out of the box. You can use multiple devices on the Omni Studio X with that one cable connected to one device using the keyboard, mouse, and the monitor. So that pulls double duty, something you can't do on an iMac, at least without a third party solution. That is a really great value add. I like the keyboard. I like the mouse better on it. I like the fact you're getting the 5 megapixel IR webcam that allows you to log in with face recognition. You can't do that with the iMac. And again, that upgradability should not be understated here. The fact that you can upgrade the RAM, the fact that you can upgrade the storage is a game changer and adds more value over long term.
And I think it goes without saying it's a better looking device. I know subjectivity plays a part in that, but it just looks so much better with its thinner bezels and very minimal chin. Okay, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the Omni Studio X here for 2024? And I think this is probably the premier all-in-one for 2024. And I would choose this over the iMac M4 any day of the week. It looks a lot better. It's got thinner bezels. It's got a beautiful display. I like the fact that you can use this as an external monitor using the same keyboard, mouse, and display on multiple devices. So it pulls double duty here. And I think that is a game changer. I like the performance out of the Meteor Lake processor. I like the graphics boost you get from that RTX 4050, and I like the port selection here. So overall, this brings the total package. You got some really nice speakers to go along with that gorgeous 4K display. I also like the fact that it has reduced packaging, making it more manageable in terms of toting it around. I like the fact that it comes in two different sizes, a 27 inch and a 31.5 inch, which is what we looked at here today. The iMac only comes in a 24 inch, and I think that is a shame. They should go back to at least offering another 27 inch like they used to. That is not the case, unfortunately. I like the fact that you're getting 32 gigabytes of RAM, a terabyte of storage, and guess what? It is user serviceable. If you need more storage, if you need more RAM, you can get inside there. I'll leave a link to that service video in the description below, but beware, it may void your warranty. So just be aware of that. Now, as far as that pop-up five megapixel IR webcam, it looked good, sounded good. And I like the fact that it is IR that allows you to log in with face recognition, something you can't do on the iMac. And when you don't need it, you can put it back inside the unit where it gives you more security and privacy it pops up and it pops back down and i love that that is a game changer in a lot of ways and i like the poly studio camera app here i think it's a poly studio pro whatever they're calling it it's a really good software solution here that's been updated giving you a lot of configuration a lot of choices as the user there aren't many negatives here. I'd say almost $2,000, just shy of $2,000 for that 31.5 inch, although that 27 inch, by the way, is on sale for $1,250. That's a good deal in my opinion, maybe even a steal. But almost $2,000 for the bigger version, which we looked at here today. And I think it's not terrible because you got 4K resolution in terms of the display. You're getting those thin bezels. You're getting the RTX 4050. You're getting a lot of the high-end premium features. And I think it all justifies the price. And when you configure a similar iMac M4 that has just been announced and available for pre-order, this is a better value. You're getting more bang for your buck with this one than you would on that iMac M4.